On Skype this morning, we are catching up to somebody who pro you probably remember back in the 90s as Hercules. He was one of the stars in Soul Surfer, God's Not Dead, a movie that's going to be out coming up this Friday, which is Let the Lion Roar. He is Kevin Sorbo, and good morning, Kevin. Live via Skype really early. Are You, you are in L.A., right? I am, but I'm, I'm, I'm a morning guy. I usually get up around 5 o'clock every morning anyway, so oh, here I am. Old hat for you, then. Yeah, you know what? I, I grew up in Minnesota. I started a paper route when I was only like nine years old, did it for seven years, and you know, getting up six mornings a week at four thirty every morning in the beautiful winters of Minnesota. I'm 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 a morning guy now. Were you like so, on the bike? Did you deliver papers on the bike? I deliver on a bike. I'd have eighty papers on this little bike with a basket in the back and I'd be out there <laughs> with that sound of your wheels against the crunchy ice and snow. Oh, that is so crazy. Good times. We did a little stocking of your Facebook page. Yeah. We noticed that you took a really nice trip to, it looks like it was Moscow that you went to. Very riveting video that we've noticed. Right. What, what was this trip in Moscow? Was it a, there, a, I went there a while ago. It was over there, during January. I was there doing some meetings with some guys about doing make some potential investments in movies and shooting movies over there. Oh, really? So I spent, I was there over New Year's. Yeah. What, what is Moscow like? I've never been out of the country except for like South America on a missions trip. Um, it's, it's interesting, to say the least. It's... Um, uh, you know, you got the, the, obviously a lot of the money in the government, you know, under, under the communist rule. Uh, they were, uh, you know, all the money pretty much went to the government buildings. So you, you can, you can kind of you can kind of see that as you walk around. But it was uh, it was very interesting. It's one of those bucket list things. You know, I always wanted to go. I always wanted to see it and just and see, you know, the people and see how they live their lives. And there's I mean, there is a stark difference between America and Russia. There certainly certainly is. You can feel it. I'm sure there's a far difference between that and Hawaii, where it seems like you became a fan of a certain kind of tea. What, what would you, I can't even pronounce it. Is that Mama Kai? How do you say that? Mom, Mama Key, Mama Key Tea. I'm not, I'm not a caffeine guy at all. And this is a company that uh, actually a friend of mine owns. And I am hooked on this tea. I take it every, every morning. I drink it. And actually, I haven't had my cup yet. But it's not, there's no caffeine in it whatsoever. Healthy sort of tea to drink. And I, I love it. Likes a little. Warm, warm tea, hot tea in the morning for myself. And it's a great company. It's a really good company. Yeah, I can see that you enjoy it every morning. MamaKey.com. MamaKey.com. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> so are you against caffeine, Kevin? Is this, or can we not I, be know, friends? It, it, it affects me more. I don't drink coffee. I don't drink sodas. Uh, it just, I don't like the way, I don't like the jittery. It just, I don't need it. I'm jittery enough the way it is. <laughs> Hercules met, is it Serena back in the day? Um, yeah, she. Um, every two weeks they sent down a, a beautiful woman for me to work with. It was a great dating service for a single guy. <laughs> so, I guess so. And um, it, Serena is is a part of your life now. Is that right? Yeah, uh, she was Sam Jenkins back then. She's Sam Sorbo now. We uh, it was sort of a love at first sight thing between both of us, and I got engaged within six months and uh, married a year after that. And even that whole year and a half, I don't think we saw each other more than. <clears throat> more than five or six months, you know, so because I was always on the road shooting and uh, with Hercules down in New Zealand. She came down and actually did, they did it, and then she back and played this character for uh, three more episodes. So that was like that six weeks together sort of solidified our relationship, and now it's been 16 years of marriage, and we got three kids. Yeah, the, the wedding looks beautiful, by the way. We found a couple of pictures on when you two got married. Yeah, we got a beautiful little church in uh, Pacific Palisades overlooking the ocean. It only holds 40 people. We invited just 28 of our friends and family, and all 28 showed up. And it was, uh, it was, it was a wonderful January day. And January in Los Angeles means, you know, 72 degrees. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Yeah, and then here you are with three children later. Looks like you yeah, have a beautiful family. Braden, Braden is my oldest now. Braden is, is just turned 13, so that picture is a little bit older. Oh, and uh, Shane is now 10, and my little girl Octavia is 8. Yeah, I love the personality of your family, too, because you, you get kind of wild right here. <laughs> oh, they're, you know, they're, they're such good kids. We homeschool them, so we get them around here with us all the time, and it's just, uh, it's just fun. It's, they're, they're good kids. I, I see a little theme going here, too, because when I take a look at Brayden, Brayden's got some kind of, he grew a mustache real early in life. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, uh, your your daughter as well. She she kind of grew. Uh, yeah, she grew a mustache. You know, I think I was getting really scruffy for a western around that time. <laughs> so, yeah, so they wanted to see you know what what maybe a mustache would look like on him. So it was, 
Um, you know, they're nuts. I can't believe you found these pictures. <laughs> yeah, and they kind of, there's a resemblance, a small resemblance, maybe in the family of Tom Selleck. I'm, yes. I'm, I was kind of, we're going to take a look at Tom Selleck. <laughs> Allison thought differently, though. Yeah. Well, Tom, Tom is actually a friend. He lives, he doesn't live too far from where I live. We're about 40 miles north of Los Angeles between L.A. and Santa Barbara. Is so he still rocking the mustache? Um, well, yeah, he's on, you know, he's on that show um, Blue Bloods now. They're shooting, um, That's right. they're shooting so, uh, New York City. And, uh, you know, who else just showed up with a new mustache is Alex Trebek on the uh, premiere of uh, <laughs> Jeopardy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Had Didn't, it for many years, and now he has it again, but it's getting mixed reviews, Kevin. I don't know well, what you sh- think. He shaved it for a while, right? Yeah, he shaved it, and now it's back. <laughs> now it's back. You know, I, I, I did this show. I did a Celebrity Jeopardy um, back, I don't know, 2001, 2002. Um, in Vegas, they had a full, they had like 2,000 people in the room, and it was raising money for our, each of our individual charities. It was good fun. Soul Surfer, what was it like shooting in Hawaii, a film about faith like that? You know, I, I, I remember hearing this story about Bethany years ago, and um, I remember it made me angry. I go, you know, I mean, I know it's, it's like getting struck by lightning, a shark attack. I mean, it's very random and very strange and very rare. <clears throat> but I remember saying, you know, she's just a 13 year old kid. You know, it's like, like the shark knows anything different. But um, I remember hearing the story, and then they called me up and said, hey, do you want to play the part of uh, Dennis Quaid's best friend? It's the guy, you, you, you're, the one, you're the one who saves her in the movie. And so I got to meet the real-life hero and hear his story, and it's really incredible. And two months in the North Shore of Hawaii didn't, didn't suck either. That was a pretty nice little game. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and you know, really, it's Bethany's movie. So Anna Sophia Rav, who played Bethany, had to be in the movie the, pretty much the whole time. And Dennis Quaid and I had... Pretty much four days off every week over the two months. So we did a lot of golfing together. So it was, it was a good gig that way. But the movie, is, it's amazing. It's an amazing story of a woman, that a young a girl uh, that gets attacked by a shark at age 13, loses her arm. And what does she do? She says, well, this is what God wanted for me to get out and spread his, spread his word. And I don't know how many people, certainly how many adults would react that way to losing an arm. Then you step into your role in God's Not Dead, which I thought was brilliant, by the way. Oh, thank you. You know, it, it hit a nerve with people. There's no question. I've done five movies with Pure Flix through the years. Pure Flix does um, great stuff. They're the number one distributor of family and faith-based movies in the, in the country. And um, they just do amazing, amazing. In fact, my first movie was called, <clears throat> excuse me, What If. And What If, I highly recommend that people go check on Netflix or DVD. What If is uh, a, a wonderful, wonderful uh, faith-based movie, family movie. Uh, it's got Debbie Ryan plays my daughter. Christy Swanson's my wife. John Ratzenberger plays an angel that comes down to show how much I've screwed up my life. And but along came God's Not Dead, and they said you, uh, you know it might be a little controversial. I said, what movie isn't controversial? You yeah. can't please everyone. You're always going to get somebody upset about something in our little politically correct world right now. So um, I didn't worry about it, and I really based the character off of people I've seen on TV. These eighth. Is so angry and so uh, just it, it, it's just amazing what this oozes out of them. Their veins are sticking on their neck, uh, and they get so mad about something they don't believe in, which I've never really quite understood. You know, I don't believe in broccoli. Knock yourself out. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> broccoli doesn't exist. No, it doesn't exist. <laughs> I don't. I'm not forming groups about it and complaining about nativity scenes that be taken down because apparently things they don't believe in offends them. One thing I like about God's Not Dead is that there wasn't this big, uh, mushy, happy ending. I mean, your character passes away at the end of the film. Well, spoiler alert. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I have a lot of friends that saw it already. But, but, I mean, seriously, I liked that because it was like, you know, there there are consequences. And at the end, there was hope because, I mean, it was. I just thought that was really nice. You know, it's interesting because I get... Every single day since that movie came out five months ago, I get stopped. I get stopped by people saying how much it's changed their lives, motivated them to, you know. I get agnostics that say, hey, this movie really made me think and really want to look at things more. Um, so it's, it's interesting. And, and, it, and it just caught fire. I mean, here's a movie that was shot for $2 million. It made close to $64 million in the box office in America alone. It's done, it's done amazingly well overseas. I mean, this thing will probably see $100 million worldwide in box office before it's done because it's still showing overseas. And now it's, num- it's been out on DVD for about two or three weeks now. <clears throat> I heard it's number two streaming on vi- video on demand. So it's, yeah. it's hit a nerve with people. It started in 780 screens, went to n- finished number two behind, I think it was like a $250 million um, X-Men movie or something. And then... Next week, they moved to 1,400 screens, finished number two. Next week, they moved it to 2,000 screens. It stayed in the top five. 
and it was in theaters for about three and a half months. So it's incredible. And uh, it's to thank you to the, all those people that, that spread the word on this and uh, texted everybody that God's not dead because I think that was a very smart marketing campaign by yeah, Pure You're absolutely right about that. And now Kevin Sorbo, who we're talking with this morning on Skype in his home, <laughs> is getting ready to star in a film that comes out this Friday, as a matter of fact. It's Let yeah. the Lion Roar. What is this film about? You know, it's it's just it's a document that deals with where the teachings of the Bible went wrong. Because what had happened, and it was unbeknownst to me, I grew up in a Lutheran church. I'm non-denominational now, but I was a you know, Scandinavian boy in Minnesota. You're a Lutheran. And... Um, it, it, it deals with the life of Luther. I played John Calvin, who was a disciple of Luther, and I had no idea. There's wonderful things, as many wonderful things that these guys did for the church. Uh, at the time, they did sort of a, a disservice to Israel because they were blaming the you know Israel for the death of Jesus, when really, ultimately, you know, that was sort of God's plan. I mean, Jesus had to go and die for our sins. And so, but there, there was such an anger during that time that they took Israel and anything that related to basically the Jews out of the Bible and placed it with the word church. And this is really a documentary with so many actors involved and covers so many different centuries uh, that shows where the Bible came from, where it went wrong, how it needs to get back on track to explain to people, um, you know, where the teachings of the Bible need to be rectified. Let the Lion Roar it comes out this Friday. Uh, Kevin Sorbo, we do appreciate your time this morning. Oh, thank you. And you know what? You can't, you can't take away my five years in Andromeda. I know I always talk about Hercules, but I'm a big Gene Roddenberry fan, and I did five years on Andromeda, so I don't want to discount 80-hour 80, 80 weeks for five, five years. Well, there you go. <laughs>